My new friend Anna took me on a tour of the Oakville Indian Mounds in North Alabama. Enjoy this interview and introduction of Indian culture and life at this free, incredible, educational, historical resource in Lawrence County, Alabama. Thank you so much for joining us here today. I am here with Anna Mulliken at the Alabama Indian Mounds in Oakville Indian Mounds. Oakville Indian Mounds, okay. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining me here. You're so today. welcome. Thank you for traveling to us today. Yes, yes. I am so excited and eager to learn about the Indian Mounds and the history of the Cherokee presence and the tribes here in Northern Alabama. It's just been fascinating finding out that you're here. Absolutely. <laughs> We're actually owned and operated by the Lawrence County School System. The, the majority of my job is actually spent working with our Indian education program in our Lawrence County School System. And right now we have about 1,300 students that are in our program that have Native American ancestry. Wow. And so with that ancestry, we're able to do a, um, a federal grant to bring to them a, an extra resource program. We, we're mostly focused on, on reading and math, one-on-one uh, -on -one instruction, but we also do everything within a, a Native American cultural history paradigm. Oh, that's great. Excellent. And then we have uh, lots of different schools. So we serve students K through 12 here. K through 12. Are they doing Alabama history in the third or fourth, fourth grade? grade? They do. Yeah. yeah. Now, do you find any families that say, I have this heritage, I have this background? And so most of our families here in our program um, are part of the Echota uh, Cherokee tribe, which is a state recognized tribe that's in our area. But Alabama has uh, many different state recognized tribes. We, and we only have one federally recognized tribe and those are the Porch Creek Indians down in Atmore. So the Lawrence County School System has had an Indian education program all the way back to the 80s. This property uh, became available and it has two standing Indian mounds and it was just turned out to be the perfect location to build this building. So uh, not only are we in a museum that's free and open to the public, so we have a classroom, we, this is where we do our teacher training programs, and where myself and some of our other staff have offices. Okay. So our two mounds date uh, back to the early middle woodland time period. So that's about 2,000 years ago. And we know that specific date because we have radiocarbon dates oh. that tell us that that is what our mounds and the construction date to. So there would have been actually a village site here 2,000 years ago. That's super cool. And I, I bet you can tell um, from the mounds like their, their lifestyle and how they lived and pottery. So, absolutely. <laughs> so we're just in, in the last few years have started an archaeology program to learn more about what is contained in those mounds and how the mounds were actually built. And we had a graduate student at UAH, uh, Travis Rael, and he did his master's thesis on the large platform mound. Okay. And he was studying the layers of the mound and using different deep penetrating radar methods to try to learn more about the mound. And so he's answered a lot of questions for us as well about how the mound was constructed and its possible uses. So in some of the archeological digs, when they were finding everything, this is so massive. There's, there's so many arrowheads. How long did that take? So, so what we have here at the Oakville Museum, we have over 20,000 artifacts here in the room. And most of what you're seeing are local loans and donations. Lawrence County is a very farm rich area. We're also, of course, the Bankhead National Forest is in our right backyard. <laughs> we are just, you know, wonderful farmland, lots of streams, caves, bluff shelters, freshwater drinking sources, and all that kind of comes together. It was at one time a very large Native American population. And so most of what we find here in the room is where people have found these points through farming, okay. through, through tilling, okay. and, and people just over the last hundred years have picked these points up. And, and said, here you go. And a lot of families <laughs> are, are proud of the collections that they've had, and so they've, they've put them here so that everyone can enjoy them. So they don't end up in a shoebox. Yeah. Right. Awesome. <laughs> this is a, a great way for other people to learn about them. Super interesting. So what's really exciting is coming up very soon, we're going to be getting some soil samples back from the University of Tennessee to help us learn more about the plants that they were eating. And so we were able to send them some soil samples from the different layers of, of Travis's excavation, and we'll find out exactly what they were eating. 
here at Oakville, our mounds and our village dated to a time period before those tribes would have broken apart into different historic right. tribes. So this, since this was a prehistoric site, so we uh, have celebrated that. And then the population boundaries between the tribes, you know, in this area of Alabama uh, was kind of a blurred area and the populations would kind of push back and forth. And so our area of the territory was, was kind of occupied by a few different tribes at different mm -hmm. times. And then here on site at Oakville, because we have the lake, it was, it's actually a freshwater spring. And that's what would have been drawing all of these different native peoples here to this oh, site. Sure. It would have been for the water perfect, perfect drinking water. In, in 1924 is the first real written academic record that we have of the site. Because amateur archeologists really from the Smithsonian now, but it would have been uh, American yeah. Bureau of Ethnology had a survey in this area and they came through. They did not end up doing any excavations here that we can find in any notes or any evidence of, but um, Gerard Falk made sure to write down that there were five Indian mounds here at Oakville. And he noted that two of the mounds were larger and that three of them were already in 1924 in the process of being completely plowed flat at that time. Oh, wow. So we would have actually had five mounds here at Oakville and three were destroyed through early um, 19th century agricultural practices. And so the two mounds that we have left were actually saved because the first mound is large and is of a completely different type. It's, it's a flat top mound. So the farmers were actually able to plow the top of the mound and plant crop. Okay. So um, the second mound is a classical, like round, conical burial mound. And the reason that it was saved is it actually has a early white settler cemetery in the top of it that dates to the 1840s, 1850s, that has actual tombstones on it. So even though that's an invasive historic cemetery in the top of that mound, it actually prevented that mound from being destroyed and plowed flat as well. There's a myth about the town of Oakville sinking into the swamp. Wow. And it's so funny. I've actually read some older newspaper stories about it, but there is this myth of this being a very large town and it's sinking in the swamp. Through the little research that I've had time to do, there was a general store, there was a, a female academy, there was even a, a town brass band. I mean, this was a legitimate little tech, small town. Yeah. Before the Civil War even came to this area, this town was already pretty much abandoned and it had been moved on. So, you know, you think about like stories you see in the media <laughs> about towns or houses being swallowed up by sinkholes, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah. I have to say, we, we have had a small sinkhole on the property that, that the tractor ran a wheel <laughs> into, you know. So we do get small sinkholes. So it's possible it, it could have possible. damaged part of a house, but the town did not sink into the swamp. We also do rentals in the park. So right now, okay. even though we're not doing field trips and we're not booking tours and we're certainly not allowed to host our night lectures and everything, we, we are still open for uh, family reunions, for birthday parties, for weddings. We've had several beautiful weddings here on property. Oh, so, so those are all options that we have okay. open to the park. We have um, 10 canoes and oh life jackets and, and oars that we can do for rentals as well okay. if a large enough group is, is interested. It's a great lake for beginner canoers and kayaks. Like if, even if you have your own canoe and kayak to bring out to our lake because even though it's a 20 acre lake and that sounds really big, I would say the deepest part of the lake is probably only four and a half, five okay. feet. So, so it's safe. Oh, it's very safe. <laughs> if, if you fall out of a canoe, you can most likely stand <laughs> up out of the lake. Yes. Well, that's good because I'm five two and so four yes. foot is perfect for me. There you go. That's the, that's perfect. Yeah. When people come to visit, you've said yes. you've told me that you've had some fishermen lately. Yes, we are completely free and open to the public. We are open right now, Monday through Thursday, eight to four. Okay. But um, due to COVID nineteen, we really encourage people to either call us before they're considering coming out, or check our Facebook page. It's uh, Facebook.com/slash Oakville Indian Mounds. Okay, great. And then our website is OakvilleIndianMounds.com. I'm, I'm a, a history buff. Yeah. So you're like Indiana Jones. I am Anna. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Well, thank you so much for having me here, and I look forward to walking around the grounds. Wonderful. I look yeah. forward to showing you more of this property because there's so many interesting things yeah. to see. So Anna said, follow me, and so we did. First stop is the Copina Burial Mounds. These date back over 2,000 years. The Copina were named after copper and galena. This is lead ore. 
this fertile land and freshwater mussels provided a great place to live for hundreds of years. So what are we looking at here? So here we are at the Oakville Lake, and this is a 20 acre uh, free fishing lake. And when we do have our uh, festival event, the festival has events and living historians that really wrap all the way around the lake. And then we have the uh, bridge that crosses the middle and the bridge ends at our amphitheater where we usually have children's shows, um, live music, bird and turtle shows. And um, usually it's a really beautiful day because where we're standing right now is actually our dance arena for the Native American drum and dance demonstrations. Also, one of our areas that can be rented out for uh, reunions and, and that kind of That's wonderful. Really beautiful. And you've got a covered area right there. So pretty. And this is where they can take the canoes and. Black Warrior Mountains in the Bankhead National Forest oh, off wow. in the distance. And then you can, of course, see the top of the museum. And I don't know if we can see much of the lake right now, but the mound, when you're looking at the mound from down here, I mean, it looks like a big mound, right? Yeah. But it's almost an optical illusion because when you're actually standing on the top of it, it's actually way bigger. Okay. But this is the mound where they actually um, constructed it using those baked clay layers and that's why it still has I know our grass is a little high right now but it still has such a nice crisp shapes to the side and the top it's because of these baked clay layers that this is not just sludged and fallen apart yeah, after yeah. so many years it really holds its shape well wow let's go check it wow, out let's check it out I'm on this thing oh wow but looking at it from the bottom I mean it's big yeah but when you're standing on it, it's, it's bigger. It's even bigger. Oh my goodness. This is the edge that in, in the fall especially, I actually have red foxes. And, and sometimes you can see them running across this, this field. But you can see the Black Warrior Mountains off in the distance. There's the mountains in the distance. Do they have any indication? The different Indians that are here? I mean, other than just the woodland, the woodland Indians would have been okay. would have built these two mounds, and then we're surrounded by farmlands around us. But there would have been a village site. Okay. Okay. Wow. So we see a lot of trees. So we're sort of looking around because the trees were planted when the park was was formed. But Native Americans would have used a lot of the trees around their mounds and their villages for their firewood sources, for their homes, their canoes. So you crops as well later on yeah. so you would have probably seen a, a wider open area okay so peaceful here too so peaceful. thanks so much for joining us here today i hope this helps you make a perfect day trip in north alabama hi thanks for watching the video i hope you enjoyed it i have much more content on my website travelwithwendy.net and you can also support this channel by becoming a Patreon patron. The links are below. Remember, it's always an adventure when you travel with Wendy.